Hey everyone, this is your five minute daily devotional. Today's scripture verse is coming from Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. It reads as follows But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. So this is an interesting scripture. Let's set the context a little bit. Daniel, who was a leader and a wise man for King Darius the Mede, is a righteous man and he loves the Lord. He loves God very, very much. He and others have been exiled from Israel and now they are subject to the king of Babylon, to the ruler of Babylon, who happens to be King Darius at this particular time. But them being in this new land, they are surrounded by idolatry. They are surrounded by, you know, just kind of idol worshiping and subject to this new king. But Daniel stays true to the Lord, his God. He stays true to Yahweh, the one true God, and loves him and serves him. And his service to the kingdom is the same as his service to the Lord. It is said to be exceptional. And because of it, King Darius plans to set him over the entire kingdom. But other wise men, other counselors get wind of this and they seek to find something wrong with Daniel, but they can't. But then they find something, or so they think. They think they found Daniel's weak spot, his Achilles heel, and they think it's his worship to the one true God, to Yahweh. They think that if if there's any way they are going to trap Daniel, it's going to be with his worship to his God. So they devise a plan. They get the king to issue an edict that anyone who worships any other God or human other than the king for the next 30 days will be thrown into the lion's den, knowing good full and well that Daniel is not going to follow this edict. The king, not knowing their motives, issues the edict and it is put into place. And that's where we pick up in our verses today. Daniel goes to his upper room with the windows wide open. He faces Jerusalem. He gets down on his knees three times a day, just as he's always done. And he gives thanks to the Lord. I remember there was this one time a long time ago where I was invited to this event at work and I knew I wasn't going to go because it was sin. And the thing was, I was already known as the Christian in the department. So I was already sort of the odd man out. But when this event came up and it was an event for sort of like, you know, a superior or higher up, you know, they knew and I knew that I was a Christian that I probably wouldn't go or probably kind of seeing what I would do about this particular event. But I had a decision to make. Is it going to be God or is it going to be them? Whom do I serve and whom do I fear? Of course, no, I did not go. And it probably cost me a raise or a promotion or two, you know, along the way. But I had a decision where, okay, am I serving the Lord or am I serving people? Am I going to, you know, sort of cozy up to people for what I can get? Or am I going to trust the Lord and stand for what's right? Which is what Daniel did to this great extent. Daniel is you know, found out to be worshiping someone else other than the king. He is thrown into the lion's den and those lions do not touch him. God miraculously spares Daniel. They, he just shuts the mouths of a lion. They aren't even interested in him. Daniel is miraculously rescued. He is, you know, recovered. And the same people who went after him are then thrown into the lion's den and they are devoured like almost before they hit the ground. What they thought was his weak spot ended up being a sign of the Lord's truth strength. And because of it, King Darius writes this letter saying how great Daniel's God is and how mighty he is to save. The same God that Daniel's worshiping is now being praised throughout the kingdom. Friends, there might come a time in your life where you're going to have to make a choice. And it could be any time, honestly, because we live in a world that just very defiantly calls good, evil, and evil, good. It is everywhere and takes many deceiving forms. You might be invited to an event or, you know, asked to agree with something or asked to, you know, do something or say something which you know is sin. It is clearly sin in the Bible and you're going to have to take a stand. And yes, it is very hard to stand up for what is right in the face of a lot of opposition when people are just kind of going the opposite direction. But fear of man will prove to be a snare to us. Those who hope in the Lord, those who trust in the Lord, though, we are kept safe. Lord Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters, and I pray for a spirit of courageousness, Lord. I pray for a spirit of courage, Lord, where if they, if and when they come across a situation, Lord, where they are the odd man out, they are ostracized, they are just sort of set apart, and everyone else, Lord, is making this decision, and they know that it's not the right decision, I pray that you would give them the courage to do what's right. 
regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what happens. Help them, Lord, to stand for you, to stand for righteousness, Lord, to stand on your paths of righteousness for your name's sake, Lord, even if it means, Lord, it may hurt them, even if it means, Lord, it may be a detriment to them, God. We can trust in you, God. We are kept safe by you, God. And even if the world sort of attacks us because we stand for what is right, God, we know we can trust that you have us, Lord, and you will always take care of us, God. We love you and we want to stand for righteousness, Lord. We want to stand for you, Jesus, no matter what. In Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me. If you enjoyed this devotional, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like and comment on this video. I would appreciate it. I would love to have you guys. You guys have a great day. God loves you so much. I love you guys. I appreciate you watching. I will see you next time and God bless you.